morning. Morning. Uh, Bob Connors, 39 Annapolis Way, Chair. Jeff Shaw, Principal of Context Architecture. <coughs> Eric Brown, 1401 Farm Way, Vice Chair. Mike Riley, Police Chief. Kevin Hufferton, Vertex OPM. Okay. Morning, everybody. All right. Everyone's got their packet. This was, uh, apologize for the lateness of this going out at 9 o'clock last night, but uh, became the, the hour of convenience for me. So if we turn to why don't we skip over approving the minutes? We'll wait for John to uh, to attend. All right. First order of business is an invoice from Context, dated March fourth. Kevin, this is the invoice I meant to send you. Uh, it, it's in your packet anyway, and uh, what you can do, if you can do a follow-up recommendation on that, yes. well, we can consider approving it today contingently. Can we do it? Yes. Good. Thank you. Hey, how are we up to? Oh, I know I'm it. Tom, <coughs> TCS? Okay, great. This is Bob Connors, who's the chairman. Well, hey, let me tell you. Oh, right. Good, good to see you. see you. You know Jeff Shaw? Yeah, yeah Jeff. Good to see you. Yeah. 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 Eric, if you would consider a motion to. Uh... Sure, so we're at the. For $15,200, we have design two. Yes, I'll make a motion to approve the, the invoice. Okay, the second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, great. So it, this is approved, uh, obviously subject to uh, Kevin's yeah. uh, letter of recommendation. Why don't we do this? Rather than uh, let's let's put a halt to the schedule and have Todd yep. jump in so we don't, we don't take a lot, up or, a lot of his time. Uh. So Todd, why don't you give us a little background? Sure. This is a recorded meeting. If you just identify yourself for absolutely the um, community, it'd be great. Uh, Todd Williams with TCS Communications. Uh, been the radio communications manager for the town of Newry for a uh, number of years, uh, and we've been asked to come to this meeting to kind of discuss uh, financial and logistical options for a new tower at the new police station. Uh, so I'm here to answer any questions that anyone might have. Um, John, we just got going. The, the only thing we've done is uh, approve uh, Jeff's invoice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm late because I printed all that stuff. So I, I sign off on it. You and I have a side by the have an automatic printer here. I never, I'm never printing another document at my house. <laughs> I press the button here and it yeah. comes out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, so John Todd is from uh, TCS. I know Todd. We're going to uh, yes. we're interrupting our agenda to accommodate Todd so we can okay. hear what he has to say, ask him some questions, but certainly okay. get him out here, get him in out here in a. Oh yeah. Um, All right. Well, so then we'll just put okay. him on the end of the agenda. <laughs> <laughs> we can leave now. <laughs> yeah. So the topic had been uh, brought to me about the cost of. Repurposing the existing tower at the, at the existing right. police station, and um, it, from our opinion, it wouldn't be a uh, be cost prohibitive to do that. Um, towers in general, the cost of the materials is probably about a third the cost of installing a tower. Uh, really, all the cost is is in the labor. So, if you're going to spend the money to have someone dismantle an old tower. Um, and there's still no guarantees that the existing tower is that can be reused, but we have to investigate that. To pay someone to dismantle it and then reinstall it would actually double your cost um, of a new one. Because um, like I said, the, the cost of the materials themselves is, is fairly uh, inexpensive. Uh, most of the cost is spent in the labor. Depending on the size of the uh, tower, um, you know, that cost comes down, breaks down into obviously manual labor, but as well as, well as uh, crane rentals, um, that sort of thing. Uh, so we typically, in a new building situation, would recommend a new tower. Um, 
we would have the tower manufacturer design and engineer it, work with your uh, GC and engineers um, to uh, accommodate that. So that's, that's what we would recommend doing. So the process would be a letter of engagement for your services. What, from the time, and obviously you get procurement and, and all that to get yeah, I mean, we can, can talk about that as we get closer, okay. but there are options and, and Typically, what's your turnaround time? I think the big thing that Jeff and his, his build the architectural team will have is subterranean foundation requirements for that. Certainly. Okay. And All of get, which will be provided. Okay. Can those get provided up front? Or, because procurement could take 90 days. Sure, and like I said, the, the, and I don't want to get too deep into the weeds with procurement, but there are venues for that. Okay. Um, but yeah, we can certainly discuss what responsibilities you have or you want us to accommodate you with. Like I said, we can engineer it, get you the documentation, stamp engineering documentation, work with your GC. Um, typically, we work in hand in hand where the GC would be responsible for the concrete pad foundation. We would provide them with all the information necessary. Once that's finished, we would come in and interrupt the tower, install all the antennas, that sort of thing, and take it from there. So. Um, again, we'll, we can do whatever it is you'd like, like us to do and we can talk about that. Well, why don't I start just to ask a couple of questions. So I, I think just to go through the normal protocols of an appointed committee mm -hmm. in the public sector, I mean, it seems to me that we should evaluate the existing uh, communications tower in its current locale. I mean, is it oper it's op certainly it's operational. Yes. What is the reason we need to replace that at this point? We build a new building, we run a duck bank from the new building to the existing comm tower. What's the, what's the drawback? I'm just going through the usual question. Yeah, no, absolutely. So the biggest drawback there is, is loss of signal, right? So you're taking a radio signal that now travels 20 feet, because all the radios are right there at the base of the tower, and you're extending it over 200 feet. I don't know what the distance is from the tower to the new building, Probably but it's certainly far more than anything we would recommend for uh, a coax run for radios. Um, so that interferes with your reliability with the uh, radio communications, and that wouldn't, that's not something we would recommend doing. Uh, <coughs> depending so what, on what's the workaround on that? Is there a switching? I mean, coaxial, I'm kind of surprised that coaxial is still even a well, with any antenna system, it's coaxial, right? Um, but to to a certain point, and then sure. you wouldn't change to a Cat six or a Cat five. Uh, no, and again, this comes down to what is available for technology upgrades in the new building, right? Because right now they're still running on fairly old equipment. Um, you know, they just it's just wired from radio to console. It's all push button, it's not IP based like some of the newer stuff that you're talking about. Um, so that's all possible, but it's just a question of where um, that cost gets played out. Whether it's, do we spend the money in a tower and move it, or do we spend it on new technology that would accommodate the tower to stay where it is. Um, but for me, from my experience, and I've been doing this for 20 some odd years, um, my recommendation, recommendation would always be to have the radios and the, and the antennas all in the same building. You've got backup power, you've got all the things that you need in this new building. The last thing you want to do is rely on conduit or telephone poles or anything that might create some form of, uh, of uh, interruption in service. So again, from a cost perspective, it just wouldn't make sense, I think, for the amount of things that you'd have to do to get that tower to continue operating in its current location. I think the cost would outweigh installing a new one. I mean, and certainly it would be the useful life of all the equipment would be matched rather than having a 20-year-old tower that may or may not be right. uh, outdated or and it's at the end of its useful life. Taking that and backing up, then what is the useful life of the radios that you have now? So everything that we have now is fairly new. Um, the antennas would get reused, the radios would get reused. I would, I'm assuming you're reusing everything that we've put in so far. For yes. Yeah, I mean, we just upgraded yeah. a couple of years ago. I don't so. think that, I don't no. know if there's any, been any discussions on technology for the new building or not. Uh, the only discussion is I keep telling these people I'm 
taking whatever we have and moving it over. Yeah. So, but okay. and uh, I mean, I don't know what the to go from the digital we have to the IP. I don't know what the cost is on that or anything like that. Yeah. I, I didn't even think of it. I just assumed we were moving everything so, into the. Right. We want to. Timeline is two years. Um, the leftover radio and IP is going to take over, and we're just to make sure that we're making the right decisions now. Oh, yeah, we understand. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Point. I'll, I'll tell you right now that IP is already taken over. What what they're running on, essentially, and, and I don't want to make it sound like they're in dire straits or anything. The equipment they're running on is about thirty years old. Um, it's been refurbished. When you say the equipment they're running on. Uh, technology wise. Technology wise. What yeah, type of equipment? Push button though? equipment. You're talking at the console, or yeah. yeah, So the consoles they're using are actually were actually donated to them, and they've been refurbished. Um, they certainly work. Um, they're all push button controls, and they're wireline back to the radios and run the radios. Um, but IP has been around now for about ten years, um, and it's what we install in just about every public safety environment. Uh, whereas the radios are remotely located uh, in the building and everything is IP from the radio back to the console and uh, the dispatcher has a touch screen display for every radio channel and has the phone system incorporated in. All the door access controls are incorporated into this one dispatch console right. system. When, when I, so I'm not a radio guy, but my understanding is the radios come into the building mm -hmm. and those have been upgraded. Those are all. Yeah, so. And then it's just wiring from those radios to the. Correct. Yeah, it's just a wireline control from the radios back to the console. Right. Correct. So the radios are in good shape. The radios are brand new. Right. And the antennas are brand new. Okay. That, that's new what I, when I was it. talking about radio stuff. Yeah, that's right. what I mean. Right. Right. Yep. All the other stuff, I don't know, whatever you guys recommend. Yep. And so I don't know if the discussion's been had yet about the console technology, but certainly it's got some. Well, wait, here. We're just starting it out with, obviously, with yeah. you and certainly Con Tower. So. We go to the radios, we go to the antennas, and then they're tied into 30-year-old consoles, mm -hmm. even though they may be restored. Are they compatible with an IP-driven console? The radios themselves? Yeah. Yeah, yeah the radios can be moved okay. without a problem. They give you another 20 years out of them. Yeah. But you would end up getting all the console systems. I would recommend it, but again, it's not my money, so. <laughs> well, I mean, the thing is, it's, it's, it's just one of these things, one that's a critical facility. Exactly. It, it, we're brand new, and it, as much as I think we're all being very conservative on, on the cost. Well, and again, I'm communication obviously really slightly biased because, I'm, because I'm, in, I'm in this world quite a yeah. bit, um, but when you're building a public safety building like this, it's essentially built for one reason or only, and that's that dispatch room. You know, it's probably the most important room in the building. It's 24-7 operations. I mean, it's right. 911 calls. It's everything you need. That um, The building's responsibility essentially resides in that room for the most part. So <clears throat> when I look at, you know, breaking down costs and, and where, where your money's well spent, I think that that would be the, the starting point. So, what, what, What's the factor? Uh, we, move, we, we put the new tower in, mm -hmm. if we, we decide to go that way. We transfer the radios and the antennas, and we reinstall, transfer the old console. Mm -hmm. and, but in two years, we decide to do an upgrade and, and go the IP route. Certainly. Uh, what, what's the penalty for doing that other than you know, no. none? Okay. Yeah. So I, I think so that, as that long as you prepare your, your staff. As long as you prepare yourself with the proper data drops in the room, right. that sort of thing. Okay. Do we need back in the beauty, space? The, like the beauty of the IP stuff is everything goes through regular Cat 6 data, data line, so you can put these things anywhere. I'm sorry? Do we need additional server rack space? You would, it's minimal. Um, you're probably talking about 10 rack units for everything mm -hmm. in the server room. Um, the servers one, themselves are single rack unit. One, 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 one rack with 10 spaces on it? Yeah, 10 rack unit spaces, yeah. So the way that the IP-based system works is it has two uh, servers. Each server is a rack unit high, uh, and it has a um, auxiliary input and output um, relay device that would run and uh, connected to your door access control system, so that the dispatchers can open and close doors manually, push buttons, whether it be a lobby door or anything else. Uh, that is, I think, four rack units, um, 
and there's a couple other miscellaneous de devices that go in there. So it doesn't take up much space. <coughs> but the only thing I'd be concerned with is making sure that in the dispatch consoles themselves, uh, they have the proper data drops, because each position requires four drops per console position, because there's two devices, and each device has a redundant it's, internet connection. We have an access floor system, so that would also uh, help. A false raise, board. Raise access. Yeah, yeah, that's the way to do it. So I mean, I think the only other thing, John. I just is think, and I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I just when you have an electrician in there building the building now, yeah. the cost for him to run a couple extra wires versus yeah. having someone come back sure, no, it certainly sure. makes sense to do it now and plan for the future. Yeah, how do you, what do you, how do you anticipate the the heat load in your in your data closets or in DF rooms? Would we, would we put a separate split yeah. system mm -hmm. right in there oh, so it's totally dedicated? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's absolute. And depending on, I haven't had a chance to look at the plans, depending on where you're putting your radios and what we plan to do with the radio system, we would probably recommend doing something similar to that. Not necessarily to that extent with the full, like, uh, you know, Mr. Slim Mitsubishi type of setup, but something that has some kind of ventilation or cooling, or, because we rarely and almost never put radios in the same room as networking or IT. Uh, RF doesn't play nicely with data. So we like to put the radios in a separate room. Uh, typically, we like to put it in, in an outer wall near where we put the tower to reduce, again, the, the length of the coax runs. And then from there, it can be IP-based back, or it can be the wireline runs that we're running now. I'm going to ask you one more question, and then we'll open it up to everybody else. The We're going to have a building that's going to be approximately 40 feet high. Mm -hmm. We have a comm tower now that's probably about 60, mm -hmm. 60 feet high. So we get kind of two options. We either have a freestanding standalone tower, or we already put utilize the yep. 40 feet we've got. I know that adds some some structural issues, but it doesn't look like we have a tremendous amount of weight. It's probably wind shear. Right? Excuse me. No, I think that the self-supporting tower coming from a cost perspective would probably be out of picture. And I don't think it's necessary. And I think 40 feet would give you just enough uh, of what you need to bracket the tower to the building, depending on where it goes, um, to give you enough support to get probably 20 feet above that. Um, <clears throat> you might not get the similar height that you have now, but I think it would be sufficient because the radios that we're using utilize were called repeaters. Mm -hmm. So you're not talking direct from radio all the way up to another radio. You're talking through an infrastructure system that increases the power and coverage of the system. So you don't necessarily need the height that you did 30 some odd years ago. Um, so I think it would be sufficient. I, I again, haven't looked at the plans, but as we get closer and should you ask us to be involved, we can certainly come up with a plan uh, along with the manufacturer of the tower to design something that would work. So I'm, I'm not sure what your answer was to my question. Putting a, the comm tower on top of the building which I've seen done. Yeah, no. Versus freestanding it. Well, I mean, I see it done. Yeah, no, it's not something that we typically would recommend. Okay. You know why? Because it would have to be guide. You have those long guy wires that come off of it to oh, stabilize okay. it. Okay. Number one, aesthetically, it's yeah. not very pleasing. Um, number two, it, it again increases your cost climbing up on the roof of a building, putting up guy wires, uh, significantly would increase the cost of installing the tower. Whereas bracketing it to the side of a building, and I don't know, um, I'm sure you've seen buildings that have towers on them, um, but typically we would bracket it at the highest point of the building, whether it be the peak or wherever, uh, and that gives you typically about 20 feet above that that you can go without guiding it or bracketing. That way there it's a little bit more pleasing, a little bit easier for installation costs, um, easier for maintenance, installation of antennas, you know, if you have to come back and hire a guy to install an antenna on something that's on a roof guide, it's gonna it's gonna take twice as long. Um, so, what do, you, what do you expect the footprint for the tower to be generally? The base is typically a four foot square, okay. kind of concrete base, uh, depending on the style of the uh, of the uh, tower. <coughs> and I'm expecting this to be a 45G, which is your typical four foot square, but. Yeah, so I, I'm going to say Salisbury went beyond as far as tying into the building. I mean, they put eight foot threaded rods 
and we had three brackets on the building, and they put four of them at each point. I thought that was a bit extreme, but again, this is, I'm not an engineer, so if it's my if I was and it was my stamp, I guess I'd probably do the same. But yeah, you do have to somewhat attach it to the structural um, portion of the building, and we can talk about how that's. That wasn't that big a deal. It was just a surprise and plywood. Yeah, sure. Right. Yeah. Came in eight feet. It's just getting it in the original scope and prep, so it's not a change. Mm -hmm. you know, it's sure. And you guys had wood, wood frame structure or steel? It was all wood. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, all we did was some added blocking, some plywood uh, for the diaphragm, yeah. and then ran the rods right back, eight right. or ten feet, in yeah. three locations. Yeah, and, and threw in the base. I think. Yeah, I think it worked. Work. It worked. Exactly. Five. What we were doing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And it was was it three of them? It was three of them. It went all three floors. I think yes. it went on the on the, on the floor exactly. Yeah. When is the latest schedule wise that we ought to engage you? We are right now in DD. Okay. And so I think the schedule says, I flipped to the right page. Um, schedule says we are trying to get to releasing the set of bids at the end of July. Um, and then we, we also obviously have a planning board with, with you right. as well to get through. Uh, I always say the earlier the better. Uh, so I'm willing to help you guys out wherever you need to as soon as you can. Thinking uh, because it does a lot of this sometimes will come down to the design of the building. That, that's um, what I'm thinking of. You mentioned that you prefer to not have radios inside the IT closet. Right. Right. We, we have a tech closet, which okay. is everything, and it may not be big enough if we're anticipating maybe an additional rack or server equipment. Right. So if we do have to change the plan to accommodate potential future options, <coughs> current options, uh, actually I think it's a good spot for the tower to go. but. Apart from that, internally in the building, if we have to change anything, mm -hmm. now's the time to right. do it. Is there any place in the garage that you could cut out of? I mean, it doesn't take a lot of room. Um, yeah, but I also like wouldn't want to, again, I don't want to take up everybody's I, time kind of looking at this, I, but we can sit down and I wouldn't want to get into it and like pull away space from needed, in other words, maybe 10, 15 years after the building's in and you're looking for some space and there's a wall in the garage you want to put something, that's great, but I don't want to create a building day one where you're already stealing space. Right. You know, to, to, I would rather have it be properly designed and properly tempered in conditions so that these things are protected and you have actually maybe a little room for the future proofing that end of the equipment as well. I mean, a question is it sensitive first floor, second floor? Is there? Nope. Okay. Nope. Can, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. I, think it, I think a lot of it comes down yeah. to where that tower ends up getting located. Uh, we always like to be as close to that as possible. Yeah. What we might be able to do is to bump out if we do a two story entryway, we pick up another 100 feet. Uh, right now, we're not showing on, on the. <coughs> we weren't showing. Yeah, we have two options. So okay. yeah. So yeah. we had a one-story vestibule on the front. right on the front. And, and Eric, you like it being two-story. Yeah, so, and the only and place. That adds us, but that adds us about 100 square feet, square feet oh. that mightn't allow us to bump something else over there. Right. And then create a spot. Well, the other, only other place to get the height. Well, the tower's going to go between the two garage bays in the back. That's, yeah, that's, that's, that's the most right. obvious spot for it. Yes, yeah. Right at the peak of the roof. It'll sure, be yeah. And I think the radio equipment would go in the attic as long as it has. Okay. I mean, mm -hmm. just so you know, the attic has a full elevator or stair up there. Just as long as it condition the space and it's like feet down into the tech closet. I, I think that's perfect. Great. You just saved yourself a bunch of money in installation time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we got to create a spot up there. we got to get condition. When I, obviously the heat load isn't going to be uh, that long of a freezing. No, you just need a conduit path down then to okay. dispatch, right? Into yep, the tech room or yep. into dispatch. Yep. Again, the uh, being in the attic it gives us some great flexibility. So you're talking about actually building a, a, a room up on the third floor? Yeah. Okay. Makes sense. Okay, perfect. I don't know any other major questions other than timing-wise, I think that's probably the most critical. We'll go around the table and we can talk about how, you know, what's our next step to initiate preliminary. Yeah, I think we just need to understand the procurement of, we have a vendor that's under contract. We're asking for additional 
services from you, and we've just got to make sure that they're procured in the right way. Certainly, and that, again, you guys are at the behest of the committee and how they handle it, but we are under state contract, so all the services that we provide are available through state, state contract, okay. uh, which makes that procurement process a little bit easier for the town. So, um, so we should just go through Tracy system. because she's going to mm -hmm. handle it at the end of the day. And so we should so just do an RFP on this? And well, we alert Tracy that this is what we want to do, and she knows for the level, I think we just need a rough cost. Yeah. And then she can follow the proper procedures, and then we're, we're good to move forward. And if there's something that either needs to be bid or because you have the state contract, then she can say this is exactly how it's going to go. <clears throat> That's all. Todd, could you provide us with, obviously your state, you've got a state contract that mm -hmm. once it's been awarded, anyone can piggyback on. Yeah. Is there one of those, a particular contract that kind of mirrors what we're looking for, and then we can just send that to Tracy as a starting point? Yeah, we've worked with Tracy a number of times over the years. She's been well aware of who we are, and we've done some work with them, obviously. Um, but so we, I mean, we, from, we from our committee good. level, of, you see the documentation. Uh, from the state? It, state contract? Level? Well, yeah, the yeah. state contract. Yeah. If we've got one that looks like this, mm -hmm. and that's what we're thinking of. Using. Yeah, essentially it would be the two-way radio contract that the state has for okay. all two-way radio vendors, and it covers everything we're just talking about. Yeah. And I, they'll have specifications, details, <laughs> cut sheets, all that stuff? Uh, yeah, to an extent. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I think the tower sections are not, there's not cut sheets for any of that Yeah, yeah, no, I'm not you know, so this, much concerned about it. But as far as the technology portion, yeah, that's all available. Can you get that over to Kevin or, or to Jeff yeah. and then... And I think that would be helpful to share with them. With them Step that. one, yeah. and we and we discussed all oh, current equipment, the life of that equipment, moving it over, flexibility to change out in the future that we're not short thinking ourselves just because we want to save something here, but we're making very good use of what we have. So I think we're good with that. Good. John? I, I like the idea of getting them on board early because it costs more to do it as a change order okay. after the fact. Mm -hmm. Kevin. Nope, I, I agree with John. The sooner we get him in and the more he's engaged in what we're doing, the less we have an opportunity to forget about it towards the end because coming towards the end you're worried about a million other things and unfortunately Todd knows he's usually left outside the window looking in. But I like dealing with him now and for the rest of the project. Like the flooring contractor last in, yeah. last to be paid. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was a pain. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So if... Uh, Sooner rather than later, Todd, if you can get that information to Kevin and get it over to us, because I think we're I think we're on a two-week meeting schedule here, and I'd like to be able to get that over to Tracy. to our team and then to Tracy, mm -hmm. and then at our next meeting be able to uh, make a recommendation to initiate the process. Good. I'll do that. If that sounds good with everybody, Chief. Um, the one thing I did do, I reached out to uh, Mima and through their nuclear preparedness representative who deals with the seed station all the time. Aside from putting in the request for the generator and for the help with that, I also put in the request for help deferring the cost of the communications tower, because they can't say yes if we don't ask. Right. So um, with, um, Dave Rodham from MEMA said that they'll be in touch with us soon with more specific questions, especially with the communications tower and obviously the generator. But to get a ballpark figure of how much we're talking about, you, then we can ask, as a committee, you can ask um, Seabrook Station to, mm -hmm. for whatever you want to help defer the cost. So that would be the way we would do this, Mike, for the gen setting and for the com, com tower. Mm -hmm. The committee, we, we probably would make a recommendation to the Board of Selectmen to make the request. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Uh, however, however, however you want to handle it. Yeah. yeah I, okay, but that would, be, that would be the proper procedure to... To get consideration up at Seabrook, or yeah, and it's it's going through Mass Emergency Management. Um, I would strongly recommend going through them and having them be the conduit between our committee and the town of Newbury mm -hmm. with the Seabrook station. And um, I don't know how Salisbury did it. If Seabrook helped with Salisbury at all, but I don't remember. the questions we were asked, um, the initial questions that came up, especially on the generator end of things, is the existing generator large enough to handle the new facility? which I don't, didn't think so, but I want, so it's a question of, are we moving the existing generator or are we asking for a whole new generator? And those are the types of things. So um, they've been stingy lately, but 
We'll see what happens. I mean, it's a critical right, facility and it's an EOC in, in their nuclear protected zone. Tell them they can have the old one back. Excuse me? Tell them they can have the old one back. Yeah, exactly. We'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll swap up. For a bigger size. So um, as far as the communications tower goes, that request is in for them too. So um, okay. we'll see what happens. Mike, can you provide the contact person address so that when we, we package this up for sending the letter out, the request out, we... Yep. Tracy or whoever will know exactly who it's going to be addressed to. Oh, absolutely. Okay. I'll, uh, I'll forward you an email for that today. Okay, that'd be great. One more yeah. So, Todd, do you do the dispatch console as well? So, if we... Are we moving? We're moving right now. Currently, we're moving the current equipment. Okay, and do we have a plan of what the future equipment might be so that... We have the space for it. Okay. And I'm assuming if they were to do, you know, a whole new upgrade, they would get whole new consoles. But that that whole new fits in the in space. The, fits in the space and yeah. replace the existing. Yeah. Okay. I mean, we're only talking about two stations, so there's a lot of different ways you can configure the two stations in there. But there's plenty of room for I think whatever they want to do. The amount of monitors they need and all that stuff. Yeah, I mean, <coughs> we can talk of, about more in depth as we move forward, but. Um, you should have plenty of, like I said, the rack space is minimal. Uh, from a technology standpoint, the only real space is taken up with the radios. Uh, everything else is a double check. Yeah, you no, know, but I think it may be, may be wise to do it as an alternate. Uh, to get an alternate. Well, yeah, we're in it. Well, yeah. well the, the consoles themselves would be procured separately yeah. from the GC's price right, anyway, right. so you could always get pricing on that. Yep. So why don't we, we'll, that's how we'll probably handle this then, Todd. So. We'll, we'll carry this complete new new package. I think what I'm going to the what console. I'm going to provide you is a cost for my services to come in, somewhat consult for, for the building. Okay. Once that's agreed upon, then we can start talking about you know, and I can start working in the background putting together prices for all this. And does this consult get credited back to the awarded bid, or how do we work that? We can certainly do that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's not a problem. We've done it in the past. Um, because yeah, there's not there's nothing from a technological. Technological standpoint, there's not much in this building that we don't do. Um, from a state contract perspective, it's all two-way radio related. Uh, but if you wanted us to, you know, CCTV, door access control systems, we do all that as well. Um, because we're just in this environment all the time. Uh, also, dispatch console furniture. I'm not sure if that discussion has been had, but that's something we provide as well. You know, your your sit-to-stand furniture, that sort of thing. So, um, Mike, if you could have a sidebar with Todd. Put the wish list out there. We'll just carry as an alternate and okay. We, we I talk to Todd all the time. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Was that a good thing or a bad thing? Oh, you that. know, usually it's all right. <laughs> Bob, when you say an alternate, you talk about brand new dispatch equipment and old. Hey, so yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, if we're going yeah. to, but we uh, then we have a plan B, which yeah. is it's come in low. Yeah. Then you pull the trigger on. It, it depends where we are, but I mean it. If we can get a 30 year useful life out of everything and not have to deal with swapping swapping stuff out. Uh, this is much, nothing more disconcerting than walking into a brand new building and seeing 30 year old technology. It's hard. Plus, hard. how do you take it offline? I was just going to say, you've got a young time. Well, yeah. and from exactly. my perspective, yeah. I would rather sacrifice costs someplace else. Dispatch and communications and my detention areas of places that I don't want to sacrifice anything on. I want them to be stated and, and, will we, and, and up to date. Oh, I understand that. But so from the police perspective, if we can go new and sacrifice someplace else, yeah. I've got no issue with that. So I think once we get a, once we get a value associated right. with a mic, I mean, two things happen. We either have the budget now, mm -hmm. or we, we factor it in as a system replacement 12, 18 months, 24 months, mm -hmm. which it's not like the equipment will be fine, but at least we'll have a working number. Right. And so, yeah, I think it helps us make an informed decision. Mm -hmm. Sorry, you, I like to work with the chief and Tom. We've already worked together, so. Yeah, no, I, yeah, however you guys want to handle it, it, you know my deal. Time is of the essence, so right. sooner the stuff gets into me and I can distribute it. The more uh, that gets done now, the less that gets done on TNM. Yeah. One we, we operate at a very efficient yeah. time frame here. Because I've been in a number of these projects where this, this wasn't talked about at an early stage, but there was a significant amount of overruns in TNM. So <coughs> it's good to get it done now. If, if you guys can get us that stuff, or get it to me, 
so I can distribute it to our team, mm -hmm. and I'll and I'll incorporate yeah. something to Tracy. That's right. I, I think we'll be able to have a follow up discussion on the next steps of engaging you as a consultant. Mm -hmm. And uh, but make sure you you incorporate to your associated fees to act as a consultant. Yes. Just so that I mean, obviously I'm telling you everything you already know. You <laughs> we all like to get paid before we do this. Stuff, right? <laughs> all right. Any other questions at the top? I do cut. Uh, I don't think I replaced it from the last meeting. No, I'm sorry. Um, but I'm going to find the line. So, yep. yeah. Um, I'll call you later. I don't have your cell. Okay, if there's no other questions for Todd. Todd, thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I appreciate so it. Uh, and, uh, like I said, any questions are on the road, so. Uh, Thanks, Todd. Any of that it. stuff can be sent to me in an email and get you moving forward. Thank you, Todd. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. it. Talk to you later. Later. Appreciate it. <coughs> All right, why don't we uh, we'll go back to our schedule. Have a good one. You too. Good Appreciate it. In your packet, you have the February 22nd uh, meeting minutes. I didn't get any comments, corrections, or concerns from the team, so thank you, Jeff. Thank you, John, for getting these done in a timely fashion. Can we entertain a motion? Make a motion to accept the uh, February 22nd uh, committee meetings. Second? I'll second the motion. Okay, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, 3, 15, 19. So just let's qualify that, that I can sign off on that. No, we don't need that on that. Sorry, I'm thinking of Jeff's invoices. So. Mm -hmm. John, here's an executed copy of this. We'll make some copies of that, John. Yep. And I can uh, I can send it into the clerk for. Okay. All right. So. All right. We've covered the CTX invoice. Jeff, why don't you take over? Okay. You've been very busy. You sent us a number of different exterior sure. elevations and concepts. Yep. So the package, the 11 by 17 package that you have, uh, has the site plan. Nothing's really changed there. Uh, this is for reference. And then we have a series of drawings um, of the facade of the building. And there's two options. Um, Based upon some of the suggestions that were made before, um, we've got the first option, which is all clapboard siding with base, uh, it's, uh, hardy plank or some type of cementitious or PVC materials for trim and base um, trim. And uh, the main difference here in the materials is that it's all clap siding, but then the, at the entry of Bob's Edwards, which is before, we've got a raised two story bump out, uh, which in plan, um, further in the package, you can see the second floor plan that helps explain how that would be um, designed. Basically, what is going there would be the admin assistant's office. Um, they would no longer be in a hallway, per se, it would be more of a room. Um, the second option, and these are mid, somewhat mix, mix and match, we could put shingles on the first option if we wanted to. But the second option has shingles with sort of a flared um, transition to lap siding and the same base, um, just to give us a different idea of what it might look like. And then a single story bump out uh, with the previous, like the previous floor plan. Um, and the second floor one, we were floor plans we were looking at before. Um, that, that's the major difference between these two. Uh, we did, when we did the cost estimating, we did price it this way, just to see what the cost of the shingles would be. Um, but the, um, so the bump out would add a little bit more cost in terms of uh, materials, but also the 
the space, the extra uh, 90, 100 square feet that are there. Uh, the floor plans were included. There's been no changes for the most part to those. Um, we are getting into more details about you know, how it's building this thing. Uh, now that we're in design development phase. Uh, so we have uh, both the first floor and second floor plan there. That second floor would show an office and quite frankly, Maybe we, we made the lobby maybe a little too small and the office a little too big in this version, but um, that's what it looks like right now. Uh, attic floor plan, then um, the actual hard-lined elevations of the building, and then um, the floor plans of, of uh, the second floor with just the uh, option two floor plan, so that admin assistance more in the hallway and the elevations of that. So, I think for today's meeting, what I'd like to get is a decision about which option is preferred moving forward and which material version is preferred. Although, frankly, I'd prefer to get the, dis the decision to the first question. <laughs> Definitely today, if you can't decide about materials and how that's working out, that certainly can take a while. Um, and we can look at that later. But, but I'd, like, I'd really like to get a decision about whether we're doing a two-story bump out or a one-story bump out. Um, definitely today, but I'd be welcome to uh, take any comments and questions about what you see. Well, let me let me start. I I, I like the two-story bump out. I mean, I, I think it's short dollars really to solve having one one administrative assistant in the hallway versus having uh, a, a small office for for them without impacting everything else. I actually like kind of having it being almost like a, a reception for the second floor when you're doing kind of a gatekeeper mic for you when you're using the EOC or you have some some control who's coming up the stairway or on the elevator. So, I, Eric, you 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 were the you initiated the thought of doing the double the two-story bump out. Yeah. So you. As you can see in the plan, there's extra space just for the bump out. But uh, you can also see in the plan that there's a tremendous amount of more room for storage and more filing cabinets and more people space that that bump out can afford you in the plan, which right. is basically what you just said in a different way. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, as you said, it, it is a bit of an ad, or a small ad, but it, it, it has extra benefits to it, including the assistant in a corridor with no filing space behind them, no other space for someone to come up and really talk to the receptionist without standing in the corridor and being between the chief and the XO's office. Right. So you, you, there's plenty of extra storage space to even be a side table for meeting outside the XO's, the chief's office in there. Um, that's all I see. Yeah, you can end up with another workstation if it came down to it. Or two. Yeah, yeah or two. two. Ben, what do you think? What's your thing? Well, I like what like Eric said, uh, and, and what you said. It's uh, it's pretty inexpensive to do it now. Then try and create it later. Uh, you already own the roof. You already own the foundation. It, exactly, and you're talking 90 square feet. And again, you know, we we we've never really locked this down to the last square foot as the driver. It's you know having an efficient operational facility for the next 20 or 30 years has been the goal. But having you know, the administrative <coughs> assistant sit in the corridor with their back to the whole corridor just mm -hmm. doesn't seem to have right. Yeah, no, no. I, it, it, it was always the weak point, I think, in the previous design. Yeah. Yeah. No it, it was really the one missing the one missing uh, component. Uh, and what do we always know about these facilities? Storage. Okay. It's, always, it's always the... It always gets value engineered out because you're trying to squeeze in another mm -hmm. couple of square feet. Well, I like the separation for the person that sits out there. That mm -hmm. The privacy was on the desk or mm -hmm. just walking right by because they're in the back. Right. You know, and then all somebody's got a visitor. If we uh, if we go on to the next page, which shows the third floor access. Are we in agreement that providing a, a third stop with the elevator is the way to go for the, for the attic? Yes. Eric? 
Yeah, uh, again, just the foundation, the controls, or everything is all there, and you're adding the stop. I mean, the, the stop probably has a value of 15, 20K, if, if that. I mean, we've always used it. It's 100 for the shaft, and then it's 15 to stop. And that, uh, yeah, about the ring. Yeah. So, I mean, I think your, your estimator kind of came back to the 150. It's 160, I think it was. Yeah, but that, that, yeah, that's probably about. So, so it, say it's 20, 100, 20, 20, 20 for the three stops. So I just think to be able to fully utilize the attic, uh, having the elevator is the way to go simply because it will get used to bring that bracket. You're not going to carry. Uh, otherwise, everything's going to get piled at the top of the stairs. That's why we have young patrolmen. <laughs> <laughs> and legs. Right. I support that uh, third floor. It's going to be good storage because the archives area, you already have it. We, we actually talked uh, before the meeting started too that the potential of having the elevator and the set of stairs going up to that third floor, if we did need to create a couple of new offices, if we kept the occupancy <coughs> under an X factor, uh, we may have to add some sort of natural light to the roof, but it does it presents a, a secondary space if you, if you needed it without, without a lot of extraordinary cost. Jeff, you want to walk through the elevations? Um, sure. So the elevations on uh, sheet 3.1, start with the parking lot and the upper left parking lot view building. We've got the vertical element being a stair tower uh, going up to the third floor. And then next to that with the... Um, Do you have an extra set of Guys, you don't have that because these were just handed out. Or do you have copies of that? Yeah, we have one yeah. full size. Oh, okay. No, no, no. Why? Okay, why you get one? All right, all right. That's not really. Um, and then the left side of that tower is all the locker room and garage spaces. So they have the raised windows, and then the right side of the tower is all administrative and patrol office space. They have the double paired windows, staff entry, and the local <laughs> canopy. And then the elevation to the right of that is um, Main Street elevation, which, as we just talked about, has the double story bump out, uh, stair to the right, and the office space to the left. There is an, uh, a dormer for the elevator, uh, which you can see in the lower left hand elevation, which is the sort of neighbor side elevation. Um, there's minimal windows on this side, some for the locker room, um, some for the community, or, or sorry, for the training room on the second floor, and a couple of windows in the dispatch room and the door to the elevator machine room. They'll bump out on the top of the roof as necessary for the elevator penthouse. And we can discuss whether that's just a shed dormer um, without a gabled roof. I don't think in this way it needs to be gabled up there uh, or not. Mm -hmm. Same thing for the stair tower, true. We, we can decide whether that's gabled or, or shed dormer. And then the uh, Lower right hand elevator <coughs> has windows above the overhead doors for windows for the locker rooms. I suspect with the tower going um, potentially right in the center of that elevation that the uh, center middle pair of windows will probably disappear or at least get turned into one window instead of a pair. Um, and then uh, the doors below are solid as we had talked about before, no glass into either door, but the regular patrol garage does have windows on the wall, high up windows. The Sally Port garage has nothing, no natural light. So that's the way the current elevations look. What's not shown here is some of the sort of enhancements that we've made to the rendering, the sketch, um, which includes the base and the trim. It's not shown in these elevations, it's just sort of uh, painted as a lot of siding, um, but once we decide what we're going to do for the, um, the trim and uh, enhancements, we'll, we'll add those to the elevations as well. So we're looking at looking at the elevations. So basically, to the ridge, we're going to be about 43 feet above finished grade. Currently, yeah. 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 
Yeah, and that's a approximately 12 foot 10 floor to floor heights. Okay. Any questions? Uh, for Jeff? Jeff, what else do you, I'm not sure we're gonna be able to get through an exterior package today, but I think we're, we have, we have a cost estimate to talk about, which I think is important as well. And so we can continue to carry um, multiple versions of the sort of exterior look of the building. Um, we'll talk a little bit about it when we do the cost estimate, but we can always change that. I mean, it, maybe it's a good time to just bring this up. You know, my thought is we're going to be going back to the Board of Selectmen for one more update prior to the annual town meeting. At, at that time, certainly, all new information will be, be presented. But I think it would be good to give two or three exterior package op, uh, options uh, for view and review by the selectmen. And even possibly two, we, we talked about it earlier, having uh, the, the renderings of whether it's all clapboard or whether it's a clapboard shingle combination. and. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm a firm believer get all the fingerprints on it, even if it's a straw vote at, at town meetings, saying, okay, who likes A, who likes B? Uh, and so I think that that's kind of how I'm saying this play out, but. Would you prefer that we create rendering similar, we did, we had the artist do the renderings before that you saw for prior versions, obviously, we just kind of sketched these yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, no, but this, but Would you prefer it's... those um, for the selectmen's meeting and the town meeting? Um, so that gives a little bit of a, in situ, you know, you can see yeah. it yep. within the, the context. So I think if, I mean, I, 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 I kind of look at it that adding the the, the two-story entry bump out, the vestibule, I mean, that that's done, then it's just a matter of making the siding packages work. And whether, where, where it was broken with the band and the flare out on, on the first, uh, first drawing, Give us, give us what you want to do. I mean, it's, I'm no, I, I'm yeah. just talking about the style yeah. of how the representation is made. I think at the end of the day, a rendering is better than you know CAD generated. Yeah, uh, because these sketches here, these are just freehand things done over top of a 3D yep. framework. Yep. But the rendering that we had the artist do is, you know, it's got trees, it's got cars, mm -hmm. it's got the whole package. So that's kind of what I was wondering, which which way to go. I, I think that would be very, very helpful, and so you would also be including that, including the site plan or the landscape parking. We can render it. Sure. Okay. Sure. Yeah, we're gonna have a site plan rendered and the uh, and the and renderings of the view of the building okay. in a couple of different versions. You just have to show three equal. If we have one rendering and then two sketches of the alternates. That's not a fair representation of three options. No, I, mean, I would I would say we would have, let's say we just have two options. We have rendering of A, rendering of B, but some say the rendering of the site plan, which would be the same for both. Yeah. So I'm, I like this the split siding. You like straight siding. And yeah. I'm not I'm not dug in on anything to be honest with you. John, you might as well get your two cents in here. Uh, <laughs> well, I have a third option. <laughs> no, no, yeah, honestly, I... I some, how about some stone around the bottom or something? That, that, yeah. that would be lovely. Yeah, but that might have to be an ulti. <laughs> well, but I think let's... Uh, I think it's good to have three, three, three options for the selectmen and certainly the town meeting. And I mean, you never, you may never know. At, at town meeting, anyone likes the stone and they know it's a <coughs> additional like, amount of dollars. <coughs> Uh, we're not going to be going for any type of uh, funding request at the ATM. That'll be, we'll have, we'll, we'll know where we are for the STM in the fall, but uh, you, want to, you want to do the stone around yeah, the bottom? Let's, let's have an alternate for the stone. Okay. It's on the post off front. Of you're, the talking, you're talking like three feet? That's a, a base. Just yeah. replace the base we have okay. Okay. So the panels one with, with stone. With the yeah, stone, stone base. All right. Yep. No, and I think that we know the default's gonna be straight clapboard. Uh, right. will, will the combination shingle, clapboard, will that come across as too residential? Or in the stone, will certainly that always works, but 
if it's the 40,000 add to it, is that uh, a design element that that we, we want to anticipate? Yeah, I went by the stratum on the other day because I have a project done next door to it, so I got to see how it's all, it's one. Yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it's around yeah. and break it up, it's, and it may be uh, it was a budget, it's like people would rather, let's stay with the budget and let's go with the straight and narrow, but at least they have an option. To, so it looks like there's a couple of yeah. police stations that probably you can have pictures of to show a real okay. thing. Okay. What what would be a turnaround, Jeff, on from your from your perspective to generate these renderings? A couple of weeks. A couple of weeks. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, then I think what we'll do is at our next meeting, why don't we look at all this stuff, and then at that point, I'll uh, I'll schedule a meeting before the board of selectmen for an update. I think at that point we'll have, um, you'll probably, we'll probably have the geotechnical back by then. Uh, yeah, you probably saw my email from last night. Um, I, did, I did get what I got from them, um, which I, I have some results, I just don't have the final report yeah. yet. No, um, it, so. it, it's just part of the, the, all of this is paperwork for me. Yeah. It, yeah. That's your, uh, so we, I mean, we can at least talk about the results. We do, okay. we do have quite a bit of, um, of poor material that we have to go through. So we're going to be using aggregate pier um, ground improvement underneath conventional spread footings and the slab on grade, um, which just increased a little bit of the cost yeah. of the foundation system. But it can be done. The, so the big caveat is, that the geotech engineer said is because of the poor soil, we cannot over top of that put structural fill. So in other words, the building can't be raised to the highest point in the grade, and it can't be even the middle point of the grade. It has to be at the lowest point of where the building sits currently. So we may have some grading to do around the front part of the building where the hill rises up. Maybe we can do that without a retaining wall, a little low block thing. Uh, and how we deal, deal with the parking lot and the grade sloping up to the fire station is another Question. So right now, the civil engineer and the geotech haven't connected yet to figure that puzzle out. But it does mean that the building kind of has to sit down at a 24 foot elevation rather than up at the 26 foot elevation and so we're the, in the middle somewhere. So the 24 foot elevation being what's the what's the center line of, the, of Morgan M in front of the fire station? Is so Morgan, I think, goes from 30 something, 30, 33. Down to uh, about 28, 27. So 28 is right in front of. But the driveway itself is planned to be um, around 28, 27 feet. So the driveway itself is on the left hand side, and then it's this, the street starts to get steeper as you get to the right hand property side, property line side. And then the buildings, the, the land slopes to the back, and our building is crossing the 24 foot contour line at the back garage door. So we're going to be a little over 24 feet for the floor elevation of the building, which means we've got a couple of feet of rise that we have to deal with across the site. I don't think it's a big deal. I just want to mention that that's one of the defining factors that, that we're dealing with on the site. Now, can we overcome that? What, what's, the, what's the workaround to get that back up to? My, you know, my visual has always been pick an elevation on the roadway and, and try to match that with yeah. that slab to get some sort of grading away. If we wanted to raise the building up, the geotechnical rec would recommend uh, excavating all of the material below, and which is a significant amount of material, and replacing it with structural fill and bringing it back up. So that's, that's a significant cost hit that we decided at this point not to put into the cost estimate. Yeah, I mean, you're into it, you're taking it out, you're putting it back, you're taking it out, you're putting it in the basement that we don't need, but you're still paying for something. Mm -hmm. The question is, how much is that? It's a lot. Um, to have it down lower, I don't know, if you move the building five feet forward and five feet to the left, does that, that save you what a foot? Yeah. yeah. Um, <coughs> That's, I guess, pretty simple. That's the only option that is 
it, it's pretty much what it is. Um, you know, where the building sits is probably the best location just because we have enough space in front of us that we can spread out any hit to the grading a little bit. We don't necessarily have to be a steep drop off. We got 30 feet to deal with some of that grade. Um, we pushed the building further back and now we're just making it lower in the site and uh, push it further up and now we have to deal with the site grade change faster. Um, so I, I think the building location doesn't necessarily need to change too much. Has um, Civil weighed in on that in terms of they haven't yet. Yeah, we haven't yet. Have no, well. they haven't connected yet. That, this is literally in the last couple of days we got this information. So that's the next step is to get the site. We plan. need a retention system. We're digging out something as well to put something back in. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of thinking there that you know, the, the GOP is, is is probably the most efficient mm -hmm. way to go. Let's just find out what the ad would be to get it. Now, at the end of the day, it, it, the elevation to me is, is just critical on that first floor. Yeah, I think we need a cost for yeah. everything to weigh it. We can't make a decision without it. Even if it, we're asking for a ridiculous cost that we know is, is high, we still should get it so that it's... I mean, if the geo pair is a 70 ad and, and the structural fill becomes 225, I'll be honest, I'm tending to keep the, get the right elevation and spend the 225. Of, that, that, that's just yeah. mathematical. Well, we can, we can, that's that may have some savings and drainage in terms of what they have to do <coughs> as well and how right. they go about doing mm -hmm. their yeah, system. And so there's still a few things that are tied together here that we don't have. Right. Everything. That's a good point. We do need to make sure that we understand the implications of going low where we are and what costs we might get for, for uh, infiltration system. I, I guess the, the other thing, my contractor side says, your spread floating level, make that your structural slab, and then do your foundation up to elevation and fill up the interior. Yep, do that. Put foam in there. And like, wait, uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, it, it, I think that way, I mean, you, then you're, then you get to design the structural slab to, yeah. to match that. But, all right, well, let's, we have a baseline of the GOPs, which I think we all kind of, I expected. I, I didn't realize it was going to be the, the trade-off on getting to the right elevation on that first floor slab. But um, okay. All right, John. Any? No, I like the idea of getting a couple of cost pieces in here. Um, I was actually making that again. They'll do a quick estimate. Probably better to have your team. Oh no! Well, yeah, we can definitely put yeah. that together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Doing excavation backfill is easy, but doing the retention pump that's takes a little more effort. Has Civil started a narrative, or they um, were basically going to start based upon the discussion of the cost estimate and where we felt like we sat. You know, because as we're going to find out, it's a little higher than we had previously been planning. And if there was any changes that needed to be made, I didn't want to release them until we had kind of all decided we're at the point we need to be at to go forward. So they're <coughs> poised and ready. They did do a narrative for the cost estimate just for the current design. All right, any other questions for Jeff on the site exterior package? Is, is there's any parking that's to the, to the west or east of Put the parking in here and then move this line of disturbance back. Yeah, that's what you're suggesting? I'm just wondering if that's an option that helps keep the encroachment and takes off those six spaces or seven spaces that the farther reaching spaces in the corner yeah. can be minimized. Yep. And then you're you're got less fill, you got less disturbance, you got less saving impervious surface. It's just you're disturbing less of the site. Yep. That's so we move those six in the back? Move them over. You do this one right here. Oh, now? So you can do it over here. Yeah, well, you can do it on which way. Yeah, 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 you can do some from one side, some from the other. But you could also do two parallel parks. Yeah. And then you could have your four over here, and it, it, it nets out if you've got 15 foot. You just reduce the parking area by 15 feet. Yeah, like that. Yeah, the encroachment area. Right. Mm -hmm. All right, well, no further questions on this topic. Why don't we move on? Uh, 
Next, next item in that package is uh, Jeff's meeting notes. As always, thank you. Okay, we'll move on to the the SD estimate. Uh, in your packet, I only gave you the the cover page for the simple of saving twenty five pages. Uh, pages. Jeff printed out uh, the full packet for us. Uh, I, I literally just kind of scanned the front page here, but. Why don't you give us an overview on that, Jeff, if you walk us through that, if you will. Sure. So, um, test estimates a line by line takeoff of the current design and um, actually did include the uh, bump out upstairs, so we don't have to worry about that additional cost. Um, <clears throat> we also had them um, price the HVAC system as we had decided on at our last meeting. So, that's included in this. Uh, narratives were created for all of the MEP, structural, and civil designs. They obviously have the architectural drawings. We gave them a, sort of an overview of all the materials, typical materials we'd be using. And then we asked them to do three different alternates, uh, one being using cedar shakes for the top one-third of the building uh, in lieu of the lap siding. A uh, separate alternate for metal roofing in lieu of asphalt shingle roofing, and a separate alternate for going to aluminum clad wood windows in lieu of fiberglass windows. So, um, alternate one, the, the cedar shakes, actually turns out to be a cost savings about $8,500. Not a huge amount of money, but it's slightly cheaper to do that. Um, they, they did, we didn't really get into whether it was red cedar or white cedar, there's a little bit of a difference, but not much. Um, alternate two, the, the asphalt versus metal, metal would add about 120K, so as we all expected, it's a much more expensive roofing mm -hmm. system. And then um, aluminum clad wood uh, would add another 21, roughly 21,000 in lieu of the fiberglass windows, which is not um, unexpected either. Uh, the big key here, uh, looking at the estimate, is that um, we do have all of the fully burdened uh, general contracting costs, including insurance, bonds, permits, that sort of thing. Um, but we are including a 10% design contingency. The, that's about $500,000. The estimator indicated that he would be comfortable moving that down to 5 or 6% at this stage, given what he knows about the way we typically do these buildings. We've used him for a long time and the amount of information that's available to him today. Um, it's left to us to decide whether we think that's reasonable or not and how we conclude adding or not adding that savings into our um, discussion. We also have a 4% escalation to uh, the spring of, well he put the spring of 2020, but the reality is I think it's you know, the, the fall of 2019, so that 4% could turn into 3% um, if we wanted to as well. So there's maybe five percent we can pick up off the top of this um, that could drop this a little bit. Um, we are at $600 a square foot, 5.7 million at this point for the building. Um, and his big takeaway was the building's less than 10,000 square, square feet. Um, and in his experience, you pay a premium for a smaller building versus let's say one, 12, 14, 20,000 square feet just because it's a small building, you don't get the economy of scale. So um, that is where we are at today. It takes into account everything I think that we are thinking of, um, detention area, communications, raised access floor, the full attic, the structure is a steel structure with concrete slabs, um, which means the attic is a fully steel framed attic, so it's entirely usable. Um, I did ask him how much savings we would potentially get if we were to switch the building to a wood frame building. He said about $100,000 off the top of his head. Um, might be able to pick up a little bit more than that depending on how it's designed. But I think that that also introduces limitations into how the structure is planned and particularly in the attic space, uh, having to introduce additional structure that's not there currently that would support the roof in a wood frame building. Um, it's a fairly wide structure, so right now it's pretty open floor plan up there. We might have a few columns, but in the wood frame structure, I think it would be more broken up. Um, 
so that, that, those were the biggest, I think, points that I wanted to bring up for you. Um, I don't think it's necessary to go line by line. We're, we're early in this, so that some of the line items are you know, the best judgment, and that's why we have a design contingency at this point. Um, so it's not to say that they're inaccurate, it's just to say that, that we don't have as much information we would have if we had a fully completed um, set of bid documents. Uh, we'll do two more estimates, of course. Uh, but the goal I'd like to have taking away from this meeting and looking at the estimate is a general comfort level from the committee is where do we see this going from here? Do we, do we feel like we need to save money and we need to change some things? Do we need to keep things the way they are? What's the What's the direction going forward to the team, um, and how do I how do I rejigger things if we need to? I mean, for me, I think we're at least time for square footage, so that that's not a, that's that's a, that's a determined item. Uh, I mean, I think we do have to look at the wood frame versus what you were proposing. Driving by one of the local buildings being built, they had a very interesting truss system for the third floor, for the roof, mm -hmm. uh, and it was it was two piece, mm -hmm. and it was to give you the right, yeah, the topper with yeah, the two sides, yeah, yeah. yeah. and that storage box. Was it yeah. like gauge metal frame, or was it? It was. It's right up in Salisbury. It's one of those it was a steel frame. Yeah. They make both, and so the, the it oh no, it was wood. It was wood. It was wood. Yeah, yeah. It was wood truss. Because so you see metal. Yeah, yeah, metal is tough. There's only a few people in this area that do metal tr trusses. trusses yeah. So it's much cheaper to get the wood truss system mm -hmm. if you can make it work. So if you can get the wood trusses, they're made in the shop. They come and they can save time by just coming right off the truck and you put it in the truck. I want to say this building looked like it was over 50 feet wide. Mm -hmm. And it, you know, went up rather, rather quickly. Really. Yeah. Yeah. Which is time is money. Yeah. So I mean, I think I think we have to look at that from a savings standpoint. And what, what the trade-off is. Uh, the I, I'd like to look at using a truss system up on the third floor if possible uh, for the roof system, just so we get a clear span on, mm -hmm. on a certain segment. Well, there's a savings of, of the trusses that you don't pay the prevailing wage at the shop, and then at, at the site, they may make them up in fly them up in sections and do a lot of work on the ground, which mm -hmm. is faster, like yeah. the plywood or yeah. whatever. That's time-saving. So I guess that we know what the benefit is, what's the drawback, what flexibility do you lose, Jeff? Yeah, so we, I can have the, in, the structural engineer okay. give us an outline of what would have to change, if anything, to make the wood trusses work. But I think it's a two-part question. Wood trusses can be done with steel frame shell of the rest of the building, mm -hmm. or we could switch the entirety of the building to wood framing, and that's, that's that second half I'd also like to hear your thoughts on as well, going from concrete deck and steel frame building to an actual wood eye joist There'd still whatever. be some masonry mixed in the first There'd floor. still definitely have, because of the detention area and garages, we'd still have to do masonry there. Yeah. Right. We'd have, obviously we'd have some fire rating things mm -hmm. to start dealing with, with wood framed building, but I think, I haven't gone and done a quote analysis, but I'm sure that we could do it. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be a fully protected building anyway, right. with sprinkler. Yes. Um, John, what did, what, did, what did you wind up doing? I think you framed it with wood frame. It's all wood frame. It hit a fair amount of steel in it because it's a bigger building. <coughs> but uh, that was for span, for, for structural spanning, right? Yes, of uh, course you're tying in with the, uh, the tower. The tower, but that was some minor. But I mean, the overall, uh, I mean, the Simpson hardware in that, that building is over 100,000 bucks yeah. for all the, I mean, and we did miss a bolt there. <laughs> yeah, no, and, 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 there's, and there is going to be a lot of money spent on uh, lateral bracing for a wood frame building that you wouldn't necessarily have to do for a steel frame in, in, in many cases. The uh, Because it was wood frame, there was a lot of fire rate of sheetrock in the cavity area of yeah. the ceiling, which is time consuming. It's got fire tape, it's a lot of cutting around the joists. Uh, so that's uh, where is it we're going to go. Minimal uh, joist uh, deck system, then you know we get a lot more headroom for ducts and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, I like I like nowadays because of the wood panelizing. You know, if the exterior walls were wood panelized, that's uh, can be efficient. But somebody used to say it's got to be a certain size building to do that. Mm -hmm. Those the, the 
the trust is on the roof can go, whatever you do. Right. Well, is, is it possible to do some sort of a hybrid between steel and wood where that, obviously you get your structural slab, first floor steel, second floor deck, concrete, and then wood frame from there, is it, as you mix it up, it doesn't? I think by that point, you probably have lost yes. your yeah. advantage. So I like the idea of metal stud on the walls. So the other option CMU and cord plank for building in terms of layout and certainly higher rating, but that's it's not a widely used system right Yeah, there. and I think you're dealing with a builder in this size of building that probably isn't going to be too familiar with that system. Just asking for right mm -hmm. That's good thought. Cheap uh, ballistic separation, and that's always been a concern when you guys are in the basement of Town Hall. Yeah. We um, get. Uh, 5H drywall and three quarter plywood separating. I mean, up in the locker room, that, that would be my concern as well. You, yeah. you, you've got folks trying to clear their weapon somewhere and you have an accidental Oops. discharge, it's going to go through the floor. Yeah. 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 Obviously, the uh, detention area is going to be masonry, so yeah. I'm not worried there. Ballistic separation in the dispatch area uh, is a concern. And then, like you said, wherever our clearing station is for a weapon. Absolutely. So if you did wood frame, what would you do for ballistic separation and detention and then dispatch? Well, detention is going to be concrete station. block walls with steel ceilings. Steel ceiling, okay. In the, and and in the, that's in the cells. In the booking room and other places, we'll have two layers of drywall. Not worried about detention, regardless of what we do, is going to be its own thing. Yeah. Um, in the rest of the building, particularly the lobbies, would have bullet resistant board for the walls. We take our walls all the way up to the deck. Um, the question with wood frame is what do you do at the top of the wall when you hit a joist? Do you then run, the, run it over the ceiling, the bullet resistant board, and now you've got you know, a hard lid over your lobby that becomes more complicated to get ducts through and wiring and everything like that. You don't really need. Um, the purpose of the bullet resistance in the lobby is to um, eliminate the opportunity. Because once somebody is shown themselves as a threat, that's going to be responded to, but you want to eliminate the first opportunity where you don't know that this person's a threat and they become one. So um, it's really about opportunity, seeing someone at the dispatch station or in an office through a window, through a wall. So we'll have bullet resistant glass and, and panels. I don't think we're going to have to change a lot between the two structures uh, to make that work. I think you need in the ceiling because the sun becomes out of this. It's an automatic. You can start shooting through and somebody sitting above them. Smaller. Yeah, and that, that's a question because it lit, literally if that type of hardware is brought in, we'd have to increase the amount of bullet resistance. Usually we don't have that level of bullet resistance in a police station um, because if somebody's bringing equipment in like that, then you're, you're, you're likely to see it coming. <laughs> uh, but, but if there's a handgun or you know, something like that in there, that's where you get, you get the opportunity shot. Um, it was more about, my point earlier, it was more about clearing the weapons and then sort of the accidental discharge where in a concrete slab, you're somewhat protected um, with a wood frame, that's gonna go somewhere yeah. and you don't know where it's gonna go. And that, it's not like it's an, a, a really um, often occurrence, right. but when it does happen, it's a question. It occurs enough that police stations to Build that into their design. So, yeah. <laughs> hey, don't hear about oh, it, but you hear it. Right, at our, at our station, we have a, um, it's a clearing barrel. It's a, right. right, that's where you yeah, yeah. That's where they should be right. clearing their weapons with the muzzle of the, the weapon into the barrel and, and making sure that. Uh, do they always do that? No. Should they be doing that? Yes. So, you yeah, know, that's. Yep. That's just the human dynamic. Exactly. Right. In the, in the locker room is it over the garages anyways. Not that yeah. that should be any less concern as opposed to the more occupied space. Correct. A little less of a hazard. Yes. Yeah. Well, why don't we leave that kind of an open question? Because, I mean, obviously 100K is 100K. And, and <laughs> well, what I think we ought to do is um, we'll take it, I'll take these questions back to the structural engineer, have him come up with what are the implications if we went with a roof trusses made out of wood and b the whole structure made out of wood what would need to change and then we can feed that back to you as soon as possible because okay. 
in order for him to progress and do his work, he's going to need to know one way or the other which, which way we can do this together. Through some emails. And yeah, I think that's We can do that. that. And I mean, I, I like the idea of having a concrete slab. It's just, again, uh, for that very reason. Um, through my experience, you know, having a uh, escalation at around 3% through the wall seems to be what contractors are telling me. Uh, um, so I, I would support knocking that down a little bit. Okay. <clears throat> and I wouldn't be uh, against uh, a couple of points on the design contingency where you're a little bit further along at this date. Well, any other questions on uh, on this? I mean, I think this is the first real time estimate that we've had, other than yeah, you know, kind of how the wind blows. Isn't it? I mean, before we move off, I do want to say that if we did sit have a situation where the town felt like this was not feasible moving forward financially, and we had to change something, this is our opportunity to actually change. In the building in a big way. Well, we know that space is really the only way that we're going to achieve major savings. And I think you mentioned earlier that this represents where we are for the space. So um, if there was any consideration, and maybe outside this group with, with others when you report this number back, um, it would be good to feed that back in the process. I don't want to change a month from now. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I think the, the big thing, and obviously this committee and our whole group has taken our charge from the selectmen. Uh, at face value, which is be innovative and efficient, but uh, we're we're at a point now that the the, the market is the market, uh, and uh, for the longevity of the building and the safety of the occupants, it, uh, I mean, as much as you don't want to spend another hundred grand if that's the that's the number, uh, I mean, I just think we're at a baseline here in all this stuff. And I think the, the thing we owe everybody is to make an overwhelming case that this is who you are at, this is in the best, best interest of the town, mm -hmm. and, and hitting the charge that we've gotten, so. Yeah, I would, you know, if that's the, the thought of escalation, but 4% seems about right by the time you get year over year. Yeah. And the design contingency, I would expect to see 10% of the alarm if it wasn't at 10% at this point discuss how we might adjust that or our confidence in the estimate, but I'm glad to see that it's, it's in there. And it's money that's spent. Yep. Yeah. So any savings in terms of brick and mortar has 30% savings in terms of below the line savings that goes with it. So bigger, a couple big rooms. Jeff, any of that? Anything else you want to touch upon on the estimate? No. Are the consultants? They've all looked at the estimate and provided feedback, so I consider it to be vetted okay. through the team. All right. Eric, John, any questions for Jeff on this? Oh. Is it Kevin, no. Chief? No. All right. All right, let's move on. The next document in your packet is a. Uh, hey, Eric, thank you for sending this. Uh, I mean, what's great is we all have our numbers. But now you've got, from the estimate, we, this is the real deal. It's not our kind of wishing what it should be. And, and the challenge that I think is you need peer review. If, someone, you know, if, if I'm going to make a, a challenge to a number on this estimate, I'm going to have to provide proper, yeah, well, my estimator is going to come in and do a do a do a takeoff <laughs> and do a peer review rather than yeah I just don't like that yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> I explain that to my wife every now and then that I still lose that argument yeah. <laughs> so on the uh, market outlook uh, again I only included the front page you you were all sent the PDF of the whole document yes Eric was uh, kind enough to provide it and I think what it does is it gives us Construction price escalation has been trending 4% per annum. There's nothing that I'm seeing or anything that we're hearing that tells us any different going into this bid season. So I think, good thing is we're carrying a 4% construction escalation, so we've somewhat anticipated that. 
uh, and this is supportive. Now, certainly, if, if there's a, if there's another economist, construction economist out there that has a different viewpoint, then uh, certainly consider it. But uh, until that happens, carrying the four percent is the way to go. Okay. All right. Any any questions, Eric? Do you want to add any any discussion on the uh, market outlook? No, I mean, I have the third quarter, and I have some other quarters if someone wants to read the whole thing. But it, the good news is that commodity prices haven't haven't risen, in, in, and hopefully that, that stays the same and yeah. goes well for the, for keeping or reducing the four percent. All right. Well, moving on schedule. There's no changes to the schedule. You know, I have our next meeting is April 19th. Um, that next mm -hmm. scheduled meeting is April 19th that I would need to present to you, but we talked about a couple of things um, in addition to s some feedback on uh, wood framed cost options. Uh, we talked about getting some renderings done. Um, I don't know if those are nece we necessarily need to meet to review those, or if you just need me to present, provide what, you with them. Why don't we do this? Why don't we post a meeting? Does two weeks out work for everybody? What's that? 29th. 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 I will not be here. Not will. And I can't be here either. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, all the sets of April. Just to have it posted. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm not. I'm, in, I'm out of state on the first week of April. Sunday? No, Washington, D.C. It's yeah. not Sunday. <laughs> Supreme Court. Yeah, it's a different type of yeah. exposure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and, and to qualify, it, not, not as a plaintiff or a plaintiff, <laughs> but as a peanut. Tell the truth now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so we're back to the nineteenth. Yeah, you know what? I I guess uh, we'll just. Okay. I mean, the hard part is we can. We, we can all receive emails, just can't but discuss can't, we can't discuss it. Well, uh, if it's, but in an email we can ask for, we have a date we could all meet, because we mm -hmm. need to meet. Well, yeah, discuss. I mean, the three of you can certainly, or the well, four of you yeah, can certainly yeah. meet. Why, why don't we do this? Why don't we put the 29th in, because the three of us will be here. We need to. We can process that. Mike, it, as you said, this is all right. yeah, yeah. here. We're not touching your cells, we're not touching your... Uh, but we can at least review the information, yeah. get a request back for any... Okay. Yeah, any, any questions that come back through so, Bob. Okay, that way that we can do our deliberation at the March 29th, and then kick that back. Yeah. You can do March 29th, Eric, right? Yes. John, you can? I can. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's do that, and you know what, and it'll just be the three of us, uh, unless someone else's schedule changes and wants to join us, but... And that way, they will, we'll be able to process that, get that back to yeah, you. Yeah, perfect. And I'm curious, when is the annual town meeting? I know we've talked about this. It's uh, uh, is this in Tracy's email. It's in April twenty, something like that. It's May of April. April. The third, third Tuesday of April or something. Like That's that. that'll be the sixteenth. Okay. Third Tuesday. Yeah. Right well, well. We'll find out. While we're on the schedule, uh, the town clerk asked me to pop some dates um, to the committee's attention for elections. Um, in 2020, uh, there's four election dates, and hopefully if we stick to our schedule, we'll be in the middle of construction. So there might be some parking considerations that we'd have to make it, because uh, the polling place is still at the fire station. Right, so. we can figure it out. So March 3rd, May 12th, September 8th, and November 3rd of 2020 are all election days. Okay. So if we're in the midst of construction, uh, have Leslie send us a... What will happen though, the, the, the construction site is going to be fenced in. Yeah, so I, I, like so, I told her at the yeah. manager's meeting, I didn't think it would affect it, but I bring those dates to the attention. It, it, will, it will greatly reduce the available parking. Right. Oh, yeah. So it'll be kind of what's at the fire department. We may have to... Well, in front no, of the you, you're probably yeah. going to have to make. Yeah. You'll have to get your parking signs out. Uh, sunflower. 
Oh yeah, traffic, yeah. Again, yeah. some flow of traffic. <laughs> yeah, we wouldn't be able to give parking on that side in November. It's probably pushing down to get paving done. And give up the site. But uh, yeah, well, but, I mean, the yeah, well, first thing they could do is fence the whole thing off. No one's no going to have access, so I'm not going to pull with that. Uh, that's a good point. It, maybe the town has to look at moving the pole in place temporarily. Yeah. I've got, all I told Leslie is I'd pop it on the radar yeah. of the committee, and well, well, you know, if the you. site is the site. It, if it's fenced off, there's nothing we can do. I would say start planning now that you're not going to have it. Mm -hmm. yeah, that way they could think about it. All right, Bob, just so you know, I did ask the um, Craig in my office to send you digital copies of everything. So right. I should get that this morning. Thank you. All right, if there's no other discussion on the schedule, well, our next, I'll post March 29th as our next meeting. Veritex refused to recommend. I actually got that guy. I don't know about him. Yeah. Got to check his. Uh, well, in that case, his and Bill's are both part of something. <laughs> I agree to pay Kevin. It's yeah. okay. Yeah. <laughs> so you guys are going to pay Kevin. Don't be pay him. I don't know. I, I don't know what I'm going to tell my office later on. So. <laughs> in, in my haste to send some stuff out, I, I wound up forwarding an email from uh, Martha to Kevin. But I thought it was Jeff's invoice. <laughs> it's, Kevin was a very uh, very gracious assistant said, no. you really want me to write? <laughs> well, if you sign those, then I can, they have to turn the original back on uh, Eric. Like All right, so we have a, a motion to uh, to approve Kevin's invoice as presented. I make a motion to approve uh, Vertex's invoice. All right, second? Second. All right, discussion. Uh, as long as we authorize me to sign. That's uh, correct. If we can, that'd be great. Okay, I'll pay. Oh, we, we do need all three signatures. Yep. Okay. But what I can do is I can just sign the invoice. Uh, I don't know. No, no, no. We got the We're going to at some point uh, to work on this whole administrative clerical stuff because mm -hmm. uh, as the volunteers, uh, I don't want to be signing checks and putting postage on envelopes, mailing payments either. Okay. All right. So all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. John, you can get copies of these back to me, just yes. so I can get them in the record. Mm -hmm. We need context in the beginning. We have context. I think we've ordered those all. Oh, uh, yeah. We have context in next. Okay, so we have... Jeff, we get you. Kevin, we get you. Did you have a question? All right. Uh, did we vote on both at the same time? We had voted on... Uh, context in the beginning. Context in the beginning. Yeah, the beginning. yeah. Oh, beginning. yeah. yeah. we it. did that in the beginning. I'll be honest with you, that just came in last night, Jim, and uh, I haven't even gone through it. So it's just been introduced to the committee. Now this, this estimate is just for construction costs, there's nothing to do with the only other soft costs Correct. that we have in our current budget. Correct. That's the quick analysis you make, that you've taken the current budget of seven million and you're now at eight and a half million dollars to build this police station. Um, there's a bunch of backup sheets, Jeff, for this 20 and 30 backup you got You got that sent to you, Jim. Okay, I, last night I didn't have it open, but it's yeah. all there? Yep. Yeah. Right. We just put the cover page in and sure. then we, okay. rather than have 40 pages this is, uh, of additional. Yeah, this is obviously significant implication. The next thing I had is the geotechnical report. You got, a, you got something, maybe next week you'll have the whole thing, Jeff, you think it's that close? Yeah. This is pretty serious too, as to what what you do to fix that. How how much would have to be taken? How deep would we have to move? It, it, it's I believe it's twelve. Twelve feet, feet or more. Feet? Yeah. Okay. At at two hundred yards a foot, at, you know, fifteen feet and three thousand yards to, to pull out of there, and then replace, right? 
we'd have to replace it with structural fill. Okay. Yeah, and we can't. That material is not great material either, so it's not going to be a commodity. Nobody's going to be pulling their truck up to. Versus other would be piles, mini piles, an alternate support system. Yeah, I mean the the, the ultimate support system we do can go to, to you know actual pile construction, which we would like to avoid doing. That's being costly and not necessary. Sure. And so he, we're going to go to uh, ground improvements to all that. And your engineers. Concerned is he doesn't want you to build a grade because it's going to take it from bad to worse with additional loading on there to hold the 24. Right, once we put structural fill on top of the not good fill, then we, we create a bad situation. Okay, so that, that's a serious. So Bob's suggestion of maybe dropping the actual structural slab to that elevation and then building the structure up, let's say on a crawl space, for lack of a better term. To the first floor is another alternative we could look at for getting the building to the right height mm -hmm. but not having to deal with a foundation issue. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and until you get that report in here, it's hard to, there's maybe several options. Well, I think we're gonna we're gonna put some numbers together for the committee's review about the option of removing and replacing the material. So at least we have the I guess they call it the most conservative approach priced. So one end of the spectrum, right? Um, so at least that we can consider if we want to. Yeah, I think Jim. I mean, as you heard, right? We're we're down to the right sizes at this point. In order to reduce the pricing dramatically, the significant reduction we just render making the building be operational. I think the biggest change that could be suggested at this point is taking the attic and making it from a functional, usable space to purely just overhead. You know, just just regular old wood trusses. You know, the stair doesn't go up there, the elevator doesn't go up there. You don't use it at all. It's just dead space, which you pay a premium for because you're not going to use it. <clears throat> so you know, there's it's there's a lot of there's a lot going for the current design, but. It does come at a cost, but to change it comes at a penalty of not being able to use it in the future. You know, the per storage space, which the police department has already said they're going to need, um, and and you just the structure wouldn't be in place to then convert it in the future. You couldn't do it. So I think we need some dollars to back up any options that could be weighed across. So I mean, the, the the only thing I see on the third floor is you could. Say what's the cost of the elevator stuff? Yeah, the yeah. elevator and one flight of stairs. Yeah, yeah. and and that it, neither are significant. I just don't see we're not saving a quarter million dollars by doing this. We're well, so I'm right. saying is that yeah. you know, <coughs> right now, unless you have two big moves or twenty five small moves that are, and even the overage in terms of the square foot cost means that you got to take what a quarter of the building away. Yeah. Well, we're not. I mean, I think we're, we're going to go forward. We're going to present. What we think is in the best interest of the town. We have taken a very a very efficient approach on MEP. Yeah, uh, that's about as low as we could go. Well, yeah, that, it, but structural and, and civil options or updates or yeah. or advancement to the budget would be. I mean, it seems like that's an area that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's certainly. I think what we took was the preferred approach. What we haven't done yet is looked at alternative stepping down or up from that approach to different other approaches that may be beneficial or not. We just need to look at them. I think with the full estimate, um, when Eric, for four years, as head of all the other committees he's been before Town Hall, keeps saying, if you kick the can down the road, the cost just keeps going up and up. Well, four years ago, we were 375 to $400 a square foot. This estimate is $601. So everything he predicted back then has come to fruition. That explains the increase in cost. And I think, um, you know, where if we present to town meeting the selectmen, this committee and we have worked real hard to get the building to the basic function of the yeah, building. They're, they're and I no think I feel very there. comfortable before yeah. town meeting um, with going forward with that. You know, these numbers. I mean, it is what it is at this point. You know, I mean, it's. I think. This, the, the numbers we're looking at uh, gives us some guidance. There's still work to be due there. 
Again, these are conservative numbers, but that's what we want. I mean, when we go through all the line items, things will jump out at you that, I mean, John, you and I will say, and it's, uh, you'll say, well, you know, certainly that may, it may, may be a good placeholder, but it, yeah, it's too high, too low. Exactly true. Right. But I think it, we, we're going from our best guess, probable estimate to, I mean, this is a, a takeoff of a schematic design, so it gives us guidance, and we'll go from there. But you know, at the end of the day, uh, no one here is going to recommend the, the facility that doesn't meet the, the minimum needs that we have, and we're at that, and we're not going to, uh, if, if it's a difference of a few dollars, or whatever that number may be, uh, having a structure that's going to get 30 to 50 years, uh, and we're not saying, why did we put wood floors in there and uh, ballistic drywall, and we have a mold mildew problem somewhere because, I mean, that's the the other thing the more cellulose you add to these things uh, goes down the becomes a problem. But well, I think the the work that we've done and the way we've Finited everything. It's easy to share and explain the value of some of the things that might drive the cost up a little more than we'd like to. And like you said, the good value that it will bring over the long term of the project. The market, the market's the market. I mean, that's, we, we, can, we can wish whatever we want, but then, until we come up with a more qualified estimator that's going to give us an estimate and he's going to have backup to it, then I mean, this is where we're at. I think it's, it's good guidance out here. We're doing the same at risk project right now. We'd have say, treatment for better word for us to go to. But uh, your point, that might share a little bit of light, but not right away. Yeah, and, and, and Bob's absolutely right. I mean, we're just trying to predict whatever the market's going to be on bid day. Right. And trying to use the best information we have to predict that, and, and whether it's CM or, or some, they're both trying to hit the same thing. What's it going to be when we get the final prices in hand? Mm -hmm. And I think if, as we move down the road here, we'll know. We'll know in September or early October what what the market's going to going to bear. But what I, what I was interested in reading was that the estimated feels that we're going to attract probably the more boutique uh, GCs from Southern New Hampshire or, or Maine. Uh, be, because I mean, we're keeping this as plain Jane. As it's going to be an attractive project for yeah, the North. Yes, yeah. A lot more guys can do that bid on this. Folks can bid on this. Yeah, yeah I mean, I, the geotechnical technical will be will be one thing there, but uh, does that come with a premium? Or? No, the size of the building and the. the well, on one in one hand, yes, the, there's a premium to build small, but on the other hand, you've got some contractors out of state that might be able to have um, a little bit of an advantage coming in. Um, you know, technically we're paying prevailing wages, doesn't matter where they come from, mm -hmm. uh, for the wages, but um, you know, they may end up having lower overhead or something like that that they can apply. Okay. I mean, the bottom line is that you don't get to divide your fixed costs over a larger number. Right. I mean, it, but that's, that's all it really comes down to. We're not paying any more for drywall or anything else. It's just you know, the, the burden of overhead, mobilization, demob, and then right. ongoing supervision. It's just that can't divide it over. It's just a lot of job. <laughs> no, for Do you have any, anything else? Uh, has the town approached this committee about moving ahead with anything on the town hall? No, you know what we've done, Jim, is we, we're kind of working in isolation on this. We want to get this to a point that we don't miss any any of our windows or schedule, so this goes out to bid uh, in September. Uh, and the way it's been left is, if there was any money left over, uh, then that would be the kick off to uh, town hall. But I mean, personally, I think town hall needs our group. We're the build committee, and you know, we're the work group. Town hall still needs to be vetted on. Uh, program needs, work, workplace allocation, and getting it down to where Mike is. You know, what Mike has done to get his sure. his uh, floor plan and, and needs down to uh, 
a, a very efficient level, which is uh, you know, where we're at. And the main reason I'm, I'm a strong advocate of keeping the third floor fully accessible gives us a little bit of uh, flexibility there. So we are the police, we're the police station group at this point. We may have to sell naming rights to uh, the different cells and detention areas. Some may be on the way. That come with three years. Yeah, yeah. Some may have already bought those, right? Yeah, you get a key. Yeah. <laughs> you, get, you get the key somehow. <laughs> uh, anything else, guys? Yeah. I'm good. Thank we'll, you. Uh, we'll, obviously, we, we've got we've to drill down a little bit on that estimate, but it's as you've seen, Jim, it's the first time we've actually, where we're at, we've, we've done, we've, we've got a schedule of values now that are uh, closing in on it, so. The excitement of uh, lump sum is we have to wait a little bit. The, yes. the obvious implications are, if the back has pulled a $8 million job, there's not approved funds in place to move ahead on it. Mm -hmm. So you can bid the job in September and say, well, yeah, we've got the job, it's $8 million, but we can't fund it, and it stops. Well, I think what the way this... So, so but I'm, I'm expecting this group to be smart enough to pass the information on the town, and maybe in the town meeting they want to ask the town for $2 million more to do the job. I don't know. You know what, I, I, I think what we'll be doing is this, is that rather than it's too preliminary to go to the ATM and say X, Y, Z, we have the special town meeting coming up in early October. Uh, I think that would be the appropriate meeting to uh, present here, here is the update. And um, I mean, but keep in mind there's things that we can, we can do as alternates. Uh, nothing says we have to put the elevator in today. Mm -hmm. It can be deferred. I mean, so there's things like that that it doesn't eliminate the cost. But it can be deferred until there was additional funding for it. So, right. All right. Any? Who wants the last word? Anybody? Yeah. Okay. All right. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All right. Thank you.